Well, we don't have our feet on the ground yet, but we are in Montevideo. What we gotta do now is figure out how to get a dang taxi and a little bit of cash. Okay, let's go sort it out, honey. This is it, second stop for our World Cup trip. Their game tomorrow is at four o'clock. Uh, again, we haven't really found a place to watch the game, so we'll keep our fingers crossed that works out. Um, what was kind of cool, we came along here, sat down, and then over in the background, that's our hotel right there. At one time, it was the uh, tallest building in Uruguay, and uh, I'll show you some other great pictures of it right through here. It's really, really, really pretty place. The Palacio Salvo is located on the Plaza Independencia and is Montevideo's most iconic landmark. It was completed in 1928 and was at one time the tallest building in Latin America. Originally intended to be a luxury hotel, the palace never really managed to fulfill that purpose and acts instead as a very elaborate collection of private residences, offices, coffee and gift shops and the Tango Museum of Montevideo. So we've just gotten into the uh, Montevideo Metropolitan Cathedral and um, there's a service going on just over there so I gotta be pretty quiet. Again, it's a, just a beautiful place. I'll show you around. The oldest public building in Montevideo, located on Constitution Square, is the city's Roman Catholic Cathedral. Built in 1804 on the site of an earlier church from 1740, it is commonly referred to as Mother Church acknowledging it as the first church in the region. Its lavish interior is rich in marble, and it's also the final resting place of many of Uruguay's most important political figures. So this is the hallway of our Palacio Salvo, it's a, uh, built in 1928, but watch the lights, <laughs> so it's pretty dark out in front of you until you get close to a light bulb and then it switches on, rumored to be ghosts around, maybe if one of the lights doesn't work. This is the inside little tiny bit of it. it um, I don't know. It's not the prettiest place, I'll tell you. It was time to turn our attention to the Uruguay game. Draped in a Uruguayan flag and a t shirt to match, we made our way 11 blocks up the Avenue 18 de Julio 
to Intendencia de Montevideo, which is the municipal administration office building, where a small but enthusiastic crowd of Uruguayan spectators got ready for the game. What it's worth, their version of a big screen TV is right there on the wall. It's uh, really not that big. We've just started the second half, it is 0-0 at this point. We're sitting in some shade, which is really nice. Let's see what this second half brings us. Come on, Uruguay, let's go, 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 go. Well, the mood has changed here a little bit shortly after half time. Number seven, Ronaldo for the goal then. So now, even on the subs, see how it goes. Final score, Portugal 2, Uruguay 0. So I've gone for a little bit of a walkabout by myself this morning. Laura's doing some coffee and some chill time. I'm at Puerto Market. It's still early, a lot of places are not open, but I'm guessing that this is the place where you would find um, some of the meat cooked on grills and things like that. There looks like to be some white tablecloth linen places over here. They're burning wood in the background there and that will all burn down to charcoal at the bottom and then they move that across and then they cook underneath the grill or above it. Some chicken and sausages. Thing is filled with wood. I do like just wandering the streets. Well, here we go, here we go, here we go. I couldn't find a bar that would show me both games, so I've got the USA on that one. 
And I've got England on this one. Big day today, two dogs in the fight. Hopefully I don't lose out on both of them. Here we go boys, here we go, here we go. I've been watching the game for the past couple of days here in Montevideo and it's been perfect. And now I've got the USA game on, it's pixelating like crazy. Come on, let's go, six minutes. <laughs> For a small amount of money, it was possible to take a guided tour of Palacio Salvo. It was fun, we enjoyed it all the way to the top. We are on the 25th floor, looking out across the city. We are slowly descending the building. We're now on the 10th floor, which was the floor that housed the workers. On the second floor, which used to house the restaurant and the bar area, is a very large mural made of stained glass. It was a tribute to the workers who built the building. It was clear to see that the attention to detail was evident everywhere in the building, from the marble floors to the ceilings above your head. So this is pretty cool. We are in the Tango Museum. It's on the, I think it's the ground floor of Palacio Salvo. And um, behind me right here is the music sheet of La Compasita. And it is apparently the second most copied piece of music is the tango. And it was first played here in the photo that I showed you before in the coffee house and the musicians played it and they asked for it again and they asked for it again and they asked for it again. And here we are a hundred years later, aside from the song by the Beatles, it is the most played and copied song in the world and this museum has all sorts of memorabilia from the time and the era and um, yeah this is this is pretty neat this is uh, real history This, I believe, is the guy who wrote this. Very famous guy. I'm glad you're still here. Thank you for the music. We're gonna go dance, okay? Thank you. Gracias, senor. I love stuff like this. I am in the Museum of the Andes. It documents the plane crash from 1972. Um, there were 45 passengers on board this plane. Due to a pilot error and bad weather, they ended up uh, taking a different route. And the airplane came in early, uh, clipped the top of a mountain, lost both wings, lost its tail, and went down, slid down a glacier. Of the 45 members on board, 16, 19 survived. Um, they uh, managed to figure out a new order of society, I suppose. Each person had a job to do. And um, after uh, 10 days, three members of the party um, hiked across and managed to find civilization and help. Um, this, um, the search party had been called off, um, so essentially they were doomed. And, um, but uh, just incredible amount of determination by people uh, to survive. I love stuff like this. I love stuff like this. It was here on this mountainside that the plane crashed, leaving 29 dead, but 16 survivors. 
That's the 3,000-foot headwall that Nando Parado and Roberto Canessa climbed. It is quite daunting looking at it, knowing how hard it is to breathe at that altitude. This video does not do it justice. The vastness and size of this place is immense. This is a quality museum with great displays that describe what happened to cause the crash, how the survivors worked together to fight the elements, and the eventual struggle to escape their plight. Every passenger is commemorated by their own shadow box that shares their story. Some of these pieces were found decades after the crash, scattered on the slope or on the glacier. All of them show both the force of the impact and the passage of time. The shoe and frames in the brush emerged from the glacier in 2015. They had survived four decades of the internal ice. The charred part of the shoe reveals that it also survived the fire that was set in order to incinerate the fuselage of the aircraft in January 1973. Here we see the mittens and hat made out of the tissue lining of the aeroplane seat. Insulation was used to form a sleeping bag, which helped them endure the freezing temperatures as they attempted to escape. Aeroplane curtains were also used for their insulation properties. Here's the note that they gave to the guys who saved them. Today, a modest stone altar remains. It acts as a memorial to those lost. In front of the Palacio Salvo are these uh, sculptures made out of recycled metal. So we are at the Theater Solis and um, this is the main entrance which at one time only the people with the expensive tickets came in. The pillars are original granite from Italy. The uh, chandelier is the smallest one in the place. Um, comes from, I think she said, France assembled in England. Taxi driver is taking us back via the Rambler, which is the uh, pink sidewalk here that goes for about 22 kilometers along the shoreline. We were going to ride our bikes on it, but we just didn't quite get it into our schedule. So this is nice the taxi driver is going this way. Beach Positos. Si, muy bien. So we're in our Uber, uh, Montevideo was absolutely fantastic, um, we had a really super time here. Uh, we're in our Uber, we are now headed to the airport and the next stop is Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Where the forecast says maybe rain, we'll keep our fingers crossed. 
If you like what you have seen, stick around with us as we travel to our next destination, Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, for the next part of our World Cup soccer trip.